Hi, welcome to the new section of the course, Manipulating Pixels. In this section, we will cover topics such as accessing pixel values, scanning an image with pointers, scanning an image with iterators, writing efficient image scanning loops, scanning an image with a neighbor access, performing simple image arithmetic, remapping an image. So let's begin with the first video titled Accessing Pixel Values. In this video, we will create a simple function that adds salt and pepper noise to a randomly selected pixels in an image, and we will calculate the pixels' values. In order to access each individual element of a matrix, you just need to specify its rows and column numbers. The corresponding element, which can be a single numerical value or a vector of values in the case of a multi-channel image, will be returned. To illustrate the direct access to pixel values, we will create a simple function that adds salt and pepper noise to an image. As the name suggests, salt and pepper noise is a particular type of noise in which some randomly selected pixels are replaced by a white or black pixel. This type of noise can occur in faulty communications when the value of some pixels is lost during the transmission. In our case, we will simply randomly select a few pixels and assign them a white color. Now let's see how to do it. We create a function that receives an input image. This is the image that will be modified by our function. The second parameter is the number of pixels on which we want to overwrite white values, and that is done by this set of code. This function is made of a single loop that assigns n times the values 255 to randomly selected pixels. Here, the pixel column i and row j are selected using a random number generator. Note that using the type method will distinguish the two cases of gray level and color images. In the case of gray level image, the number 255 is assigned to the single 8-bit value. For a color image, you need to assign 255 to the three primary color channels in order to obtain a white pixel. This block of code generates the number, and here we have specified the coordinated for it. This line is used for the single 8-bit image, and for three-channel image, we have defined these three lines. You can call this function by passing it an image, by referring this highlighted code, which will open the image, then display the image, and finally open the window. After running this code, we will see the resulting image like this. You can see the salty effect here. Nice! The CVMAT class includes several methods to access the different attributes of an image. The public member variables, columns, and rows give you the number of columns and rows in the image. For element access, CVMAT has at int y int x method, in which x is the column number and y is the row number. However, the type returned by a method must be known at compile time, and since CVMAT can hold elements of any type, the programmer needs to specify the return type that is expected. That is why the AT method has been implemented as a template method. So, when we call it, we must specify the image element type like this. It is important to note that it is the programmer's responsibility to make sure that the type specified matches the type contained in the matrix. The AT method does not perform any type conversion. In color images, each pixel is associated with three components, the red, green, and blue channels. Therefore, a CVMAT class that contains a color image will return a vector of three 8-bit values. OpenCV has defined a type for such short vectors, and it is called CV vector 3 b This is a vector of three unsigned characters. This explains why the element access to the pixels of a color pixel is written like this. Here the channel index designates one of the three color channels. OpenCV stores the channel values in the order blue, green, and red. Blue is, therefore, channel 0. You can also use the short vector data structure directly and write. Similar vector types also exist for two element and four element vectors that can be used as two or four, as well as four other element types. For example, for a two element float vector, the last letter of the type name would be replaced by an F, that is, CV vector 2F. In the case of a short integer, the last letter is replaced with S. This letter is an I for an integer and a D for a double precision floating point vector. All of these types are defined using the CV vector T comma N template class, where T is the type and N is the number of vector elements. As a last note, you might have been surprised by the fact that our image modifying function uses a pass by value image parameter. This works because when images are copied, they will share the same image data. So, 
you do not necessarily have to transmit images by references when you want to modify their content. Incidentally, pass-by value parameters often make code optimization easier for the compiler. Now what's more, among the extra methods there is operator, which allows direct access to matrix elements. Therefore, if image is a CV mat variable that corresponds to a uchar matrix, then you can run this code. Since the type of the CV mat underscore elements is declared when the variable is created, the operator method knows at compile time which type is to be returned, other than the fact it is shorter to write. Using the operator method provides exactly the same result as the AT method, 